I have modified my Alumalite dye bottle shaker. And uh, it was shaking at uh, 1725 shakes per minute. Right now we have a ratio of exactly 3 to 1. I've checked it. So we're shaking at 575 shakes per minute, which is a lot less violent. And I've noticed that it seems to be more than enough. Anyway, you probably want to see it work, right? Now this is not only shaking the little bottle back and forth, it also has a sort of mixing action. I'll show you. This camera that I use most of the time for these videos is not what you would call a slow motion camera, but I can have a slow motion feature that will shoot at 120 frames per second. So we're going to shoot at 120 frames per second, and I'm going to speed the shutter speed up to about two thousandths, so we should be able to kind of see what's going on. Plus I'll be able to slow it down even a little more in the software. The bottle sort of travels in an oval fashion, kind of like the one that I've superimposed here. Now the only thing I can think of to make the dye mix up even better would be if the bottle was to slowly rotate as it's going along on that elliptical track. But let's not get too ridiculous here. This is ridiculous enough. I can well imagine that right now somebody's looking at this and thinking, oh my goodness, that doesn't look safe. If you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you could get your finger yanked off in the pulley, or you could get your knuckles wrapped real bad on something. Well, how about this novel idea? Start paying attention to what you're doing. I realize that I probably offended some of the safety Sams out there. So for a little bit of comic relief, think about this. We can now safely say, it is shaken and stirred. Now there's a couple or three things I want to mention here. And First of all, some of you may have noticed that I didn't reply to any of the comments uh, in the last video. And the reason for that is they were all so similar. And uh, the, 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 the comments went like this. Why not, before you do the finish, you know, dye it again? Um, well, that's not what I was trying to do. What I was trying to do was see if I can get the cactus juice to dye right, you know, like here where it's, where it's not green. This is the second one, by the way, that I did later yesterday afternoon. It actually turned out quite a bit better. At least there's a lot more noticeable green. Obviously, there was a lot more punky wood and cracks in this piece than there was in this one. And it seems that where the uh, alumalite, or rather the cactus juice, was fairly, fairly thick, there you could see the green, but it didn't really dye the wood. Uh, anyway, I'm going to sort of give up on this for a little while. Uh, no extra charge for the fly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Canada has flies. Uh, go on. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I should reshoot this one or not. That was interesting. So anyway, now what was I talking about? Anyway, uh, before I get going here and mix up my alumalite, uh, and I'm going to use a little bit of white and a little bit of blue and green, and I ho I'm hoping to get to this color here, the the uh, the darker blue green or the the lighter I mean, not the darker. The way I remember this boat, it is the it had this original paint on it right here, not this. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's let's get going here. And, and it is true that, yeah, sure, I could have, before I put the finish on these, I could have, uh, you know, re-dyed them. And uh, they, they probably would have come out looking more like this. However, that's not what I was trying to do. Uh, I'm trying to repeat myself. Now what I could have done is I could have gone to the hobby store and I could have bought a little jar of testers paint that was the same color as this and then painted it. Uh, you know, then I would have ended up with these, this, this wood, this color, but then I wouldn't have been able to see the wood. So anyway, I think I've probably beaten this to death here. 
and I imagine that those clicking sounds that I've been hearing are probably people clicking the stop button. I've sprayed mold release on the inside and then I wash my hands with soap and water so I don't transfer any mold release onto this little piece of blue goose wood. I'm just going to sort of wedge it in there. I realize it's going to maybe stick a little bit to the sides, or to the ends rather. I'll try and get that square. And the idea is, I want to end up with something like this. We'll see how it goes. It'd also be interesting to see how is it going to come out where the cracks are around that knot. I think that might actually add a little character to it. I think I'm ready to go here. Got the vacuum chamber ready to go. Timer's ready to turn on. Uh, mind you, like I said before, I don't need the timer until I mix these two together. Here's the part A. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it five drops of white and one drop each of the two dyes and uh, mix it up and see what it looks like. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And I have two pesky flies flying around right now. And with my luck, they'll probably land in this alumilite. Okay, just one drop. One. Okay, and one of the green. All right, let's mix that up and see what we got. And there's no hurry, because like I say, I haven't added these together yet. I think that's gonna be just about right. I don't think I need it any stronger. I think it's gonna be just perfect. Good guess. Scrape the sides good. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off, thoroughly mix these two together in this for about uh, five minutes, preferably without a fly. And uh, yeah, next time you see me, it'll be in the vacuum chamber. Now I have clearly mixed up more than I need here.
And it's been resting now for probably, I'm guessing, two and a half, three minutes. There's no big rush to get the pressure on because, uh, you know, this stuff stays uh, uh, fluidy for oh, another 10 minutes at least. And we've got probably most of the air out of there. I can see a little speck of dust that fell on here, but that's all right. Probably let it rest just a little bit longer, just in case there's any other air bubbles that are trying to get their way to the top. Because once I put the pressure on, then what happens is the bubbles get compressed down to about one ninth or so the vol their volume and they don't want to rise to the top as easy but on the other hand they become almost invisible because they're so small okay that noise you hear running in the background that's my air conditioner we've had some pretty hot weather here in winnipeg the last uh, few days it's uh, been 33 degrees celsius in the shade in my backyard That should do it. And here we go. Watch the gauge. I know you guys are probably all watching for this to come flying out at me. Don't worry, this thing's rated for about 3,000 pounds. Not, not this stuff, not, and not this nut or the weld, but the tank itself before it was modified, it would uh, stand a 3,000 pound working pressure. It's a hydraulic cylinder, for those of you who don't know. Okay, which we're, we're about eight and a half, nine bar, so that's pretty good. And, once again, we'll see what we've got in the morning. Just a point of interest here. I'm upstairs at the moment editing out those video files that I just took. And I looked over at my outside thermometer sensor and it said 36.3 degrees Celsius. Now that's hot for Winnipeg. In fact, that's hot for anywhere.